I'm going to cover compression settings, additive and subtractive equalization, voice restoration, and I'm even going to cover how to mix your voice with music using something called sidechain compression. Whether you're using a professional microphone at home or a shotgun microphone while you're running and gunning, a GoPro, or even an iPhone, Okay, so here we have a audio file that I recorded with my studio microphone at home. And I'm in the edit timeline. And although you can apply some audio effects here in the edit tab, we're gonna hop over to the Fairlight tab where you should do all of your post-processing for your voice. So here I have a voiceover on channel four. This is a sample clip of me talking into my studio microphone. So the first thing I like to do is get my entire audio file at a good baseline volume. So I'm going to right click on it and select normalize audio levels. My target level is negative three. So let's go ahead and select normalize. That'll bring the overall volume up just a little bit. Next, what you wanna do is come over here to the right hand side in your mixer. And we want to find A4, which is the audio four channel that we're on. And the first thing you wanna do is click on this little plus button and you wanna come down until you see restoration. Scroll over to Fairlight Effects and select de -esser. Now a de will actually compress the s and the sh when you speak. So let's go ahead and adjust this so it kind of balances out our voice. First thing you wanna do is select listen to S only. And I know for my voice, the frequency range between 7,000 to about 8,000 is where we want to really focus our attention. Let's go ahead and turn up the amount so we really boost those harsh frequencies and listen to my voice from the beginning. This is a sample clip of me talking into my studio microphone. The microphone I use is the Shure SM7B. Around the 7.5K range is where I'm going to kind of suppress these frequencies. Let's go ahead and turn off the listen to S only. And instead of having this thing crank to 100%, what I like to do is start at 50 and work my way down because sometimes what can happen is it really squashes the high end and we don't want that. This is a sample clip of me talking into my studio microphone. The microphone I use is the Shure SM7B and I think it sounds amazing. So 50% is a good amount for my specific voice. You can also turn the reaction time of how quickly this compresses that high end. I keep mine at medium. This next one is kind of up to you if you want to use it. I use it on my voice sometimes, and it kind of gives the vocal a little bit more body, so to speak. Go ahead and click on that plus button again, come down to dynamics, scroll down until you see Airlight effects and select soft clipper. Then I like to come up to the preset and select soft drive. This is without it. This is a sample clip of me talking into my studio microphone. And this is with it on. The microphone I use is the Shure SM7B. So as you can hear, it makes it a little bit more throaty. Next, what you wanna do is close that out. You wanna come down here to the EQ and you want to double click on it. The first thing we wanna do is do some subtractive equalization, meaning we're gonna get rid of all the frequencies that we don't need in our voice. So the first thing you wanna do is select band one. Then you wanna drag it up. And what I like to do is kinda of cut out everything below 100 and below. If you want a little bit more bass in your voice, then you can kind of lower this down a little bit. But honestly, anything below 60 hertz is kind of just sub bass. Even anything under 100 hertz is really just sub bass, which your voice really doesn't need. And if you plan on mixing your voice with music, you kind of want to save the low end for the music so you don't have any phasing issues, which creates distortion, which sounds like crap on your speakers. Next, let's go ahead and go to band two. I'm going to click on this little drop down arrow and select the notch filter. Then I'm gonna turn my Q factor up all the way. And what I'm gonna do now is pull this up as far as it will go. I'm gonna swipe between 200 and 300 hertz to really hear the problem frequencies. This is a sample clip of me talking into my studio microphone. The microphone I use is the Shure SM7B. And I think it sounds amazing. So a lot of those harsher frequencies that we don't need, I think are a little higher towards 280. So I'm going to now pull down just about 
to negative three, we're going to do really, really small surgical adjustments as far as cutting frequencies that we don't need. Next, I'm going to do the exact same thing with number three. I'm going to turn the Q factor up all the way, and I'm going to sweep between about 300 and 500 just to see if there's any problem frequencies there. This is a sample clip of me talking into my studio microphone. The microphone I use is the Shure. So I can already tell about 440 to 450 is where I have some problem frequencies is okay. I'm just going to pull a little dip down, maybe 2 dB there. Now, if you want to add some clarity, you can actually come over here to band number four and you can pull up some frequencies around five to 6,000 and kind of emphasize the high end of your voice. When you're boosting frequencies, you want to actually have a low Q factor. When you're cutting frequencies, you want to have a high Q factor. I'm going to put my curve around 5.5K. This is a sample clip of me talking into my studio microphone. Okay, so the last thing you want to do in the EQ is select band number six. And we're going to turn this down to about 15 to 14K. We don't need any of those higher frequencies as those are just kind of not needed. So here's with the EQ off. This is a sample clip of me talking into my studio microphone. Now here's with it on. This is a sample clip of me talking into my studio microphone. The microphone I use is the Shure. So sounds much better. Sounds a little bit cleaner boosting with some clarity. It's really nice. Let's go ahead and close that out. Also, by the way, if this isn't default for you guys, you got to make sure that your FX, EQ, and Dynamics is selected. Because what I actually learned in music production school is you need to EQ, then compress. So make sure to have FX, EQ, and Dynamics selected. All right, so next what you want to do is double click on the compressor. Now that'll bring up this awesome looking thing. And so the first thing you want to do is turn it on. Then come to the beginning of your voice and play it through. This is a sample clip of me talking into my studio microphone. Now this is already perfect because you want to actually between negative three and negative six gain reduction. And that's right here. You will see the gain reduction meter here bouncing down and up as you listen to the voice. The microphone I use is the Shure SM7B. As far as my compressor settings, what I like to do is actually turn up the attack a little bit to about three to four milliseconds, just because I want the emphasis and the articulation of my words to punch through. Then once the compressor waits that amount of time, I want it to actually work on kind of compressing the rest of the sound. If you have your attack time too fast, you're going to cut off and kind of squash the very first part of every word that you say. As far as the release time, I like to have this as quickly as possible because if you stop talking, I want it to kind of react quickly to the next words that you start speaking into the microphone. This is a sample clip of me talking into my studio microphone. Now, if you have only negative three or a little, a little metering right here, what you can do is actually turn your threshold down to get the proper amount of gain reduction. The microphone I use is the Shure SM7B, and I think it sounds so, depending on how loud your voice is and how dynamic your voice is, you're going to have to actually play around with this and make sure that you fine tune this threshold to your liking. Also, I like to turn the ratio up between 2.5 to about 3.5. Kind of just personal taste, but just kind of play with those settings and see what you like best. This is a sample clip of me talking into my studio microphone. Then the last thing I like to do in the compressor is actually turn up the knee to about 20. Now, as you make these adjustments, you'll see up here that this is affecting how the compressor is reacting to the dynamics of your voice. This is a sample clip of me talking into my studio microphone. The microphone I use is the Shure SM7B. So I don't know if you guys have noticed, but there's this popping sound that actually happens with my mouth or something after I stop talking here. Studio microphone. You hear that kind of thing? Studio microphone. Kind of annoying so one way to fix that is just to cut it out another way is you want to turn on the gate and a gate will basically just cut off the signal volume level when your voice goes below a certain threshold so i'm going to really exaggerate this so you can hear it this is a sample clip of me talking into my studio microphone 
So it's almost like too fast if you crank it up too high. It doesn't do a very good job. So if I bring this back down, and I actually bring the attack up just a few milliseconds. This is a sample clip of me talking into my studio microphone. And then also if I want to bring the range up, it'll really kind of cut it off quickly. Studio microphone. The microphone I use is the Shure SM7B. I also adjust the release time so it's a little bit faster. Me talking into my studio microphone. The, but do you notice how that pop is gone now? Studio microphone. My studio microphone. Now if I turn this gate off. Studio microphone. The, you hear the pop in the breath? So that's a way you can kind of restore just a good sounding vocal without having to go in there and chop all those little things out or use a D popper or whatever. This is the best way to do it in my opinion. Okay, so the next thing you wanna do, you wanna come over here to where it says limiter. Go ahead and turn that on. By default, it squashes the top of the signal where the compressor is. So if you look at this graph right here and you turn the threshold, so it's not negative 20, but let's say negative nine, You'll see it's just kind of touching the top of that line. That's what I like to do. This limiter is just to kind of preserve the very, very high peaks and transients of your voice as you talk. You don't want to squash it too much. It's just kind of there as a safety net. This is a sample clip of, and you'll see some gain reduction happening on the limiter as well. And you only want this to kind of flash. You don't even really want to see it ever. Me talking into my studio microphone. The microphone. I then, since we kind of squashed the vocal by compressing it, what we can do is actually bring up the overall volume of it with this makeup slider. So let's go ahead and pull this up all the way. And if you push it too far, you'll see this red line occur. That means you're going to start clipping and distorting it. So you don't want to do that. You want to just bring it down so it's right below the line. You can adjust this so it's like negative two, negative three. But I like to kind of just bring it up as high as you can so you can bring the overall volume of the track up. This is a sample clip of me talking into my studio microphone. The microphone I use is the Shure SM7B. All right, so this is the before. This is a sample clip of me talking into my studio microphone. And this is the after. This is a sample clip of me talking into my studio microphone. The microphone I use is the Shure SM7B. Much better, much better. Okay, so now if you want to mix your voice with some music, go ahead and bring in a song of your choice. This is what it sounds like if you just drag it in and do no adjustments. This is a sample clip of me talking into my studio microphone. The microphone I use. So obviously it's way distorted, you can't really hear my voice, and it doesn't sound very good. The first thing you want to do is come back to the track where your vocal is or your voice, wherever you're talking. Come over here to the compressor and go ahead and turn on this little button that says send. Go ahead and close that compressor out. Then come to the channel where your audio is. In this case, this is channel five for me. So over here in the mixer, I'm going to double click on this compressor. I'm going to turn it on. And then I'm going to select listen. So now essentially what we're doing is we are sending the volume of the vocal to the audio channel and this audio channel is being compressed every single time my voice comes through using this compressor. So now this is what it sounds like. This is a sample clip of me talking into my studio microphone. Sounds a little bit better. So the next thing I like to do is just turn the threshold down a little bit and then also turn the attack time down as quickly as it will go because we want this compressor to immediately duck the volume of the music as soon as it hears the vocal or the specific audio track speaking. I'm also going to turn up the ratio just to about 2.4, and now we can hear what it sounds like now. This is a sample clip of me talking into my studio microphone. Now, this is where you're also going to have to turn down the audio volume of that specific song. There's only so much you can do with this threshold and the ratio before you start really starting to distort it and get like a pumping effect, which sounds like this. This is a sample clip of me talking into my studio microphone. And that doesn't sound very good. So you gotta find like a good balance between, you know, your threshold and the actual volume of the song. So in this case, I'm going to turn the volume of this song down to about negative, 
mm, eight. This is a sample clip of me talking into my studio microphone. Now I think the volume of that song could be a little higher. Let us turn up to 5.9. This is a sample clip of me talking into my studio microphone. The microphone I use is the Shure SM7B. And I think it sounds amazing. And here's a little quick hack or something that you guys may want to know. And that is if you want to just kind of muffle the sound as soon as you start talking, what I like to do is just trim the clip where I want that effect to happen. Come up here to the equalizer, turn on this EQ, turn on band number four and bring this down to about, I don't know, 250, 500. Make sure, that's, make sure that specific part of the clip is selected that you want this effect to happen on. And then add some basic crossfades on the audio and check this out. This is a sample clip of me talking into my studio microphone. The microphone, and then when it fades out, I think it sounds amazing. Please like and subscribe if you found this helpful, and I will see you in my next video.